so i went through some of the comments on my complete tutorial on alight motion and i realized that hey the audio was really poor so i must apologize for that and in this video i'll try my best to ensure that you can hear me clearly as we go through once again this video will be slightly different as we'll be more so creating you know complete animations as opposed to simply just guiding you throughout the process so it may be a bit longer but let's just dive right into it so once you open a light motion one of the first things you realize is when you're about to create a project it gives you these options you can click that x mark and type in the name of your project so let's call this a cool project and you can set the aspect ratio you can set the resolution as you see it goes up to 4k you can set the frame rate right let's set it at 30 and you can change your background from light gray to black to white green etc and one of the things i really love about a light motion 4.0 is it really gives you a bunch more options from the get-go let's say we're creating you know a green screen effect we can do this right here so let's go ahead and create our project so once you've created the project at the top left you'll notice you see the name of the project and a back button right because there was nothing added just now it did not populate and it wasn't saved here so let's go ahead change it to 16 by 9 let's call it cool project create project now if i add an element and let's change this color to white when i go back now you see that it's saved because i've you know actually populated it with some type of information on the left hand side you see the name of the project right underneath that you see some options and these are new to 4.0 so i'll go over them in a, a next video and on the right hand side are really the core elements that you'll be using most of the time so you have your shapes and you just simply need to tap on any one of them to bring in a shape right you have media and if you tap on that you can add your photos videos etc audio same thing object is also new and elements are really where you can you know save elements add projects inside of projects or you know download elements or whatever so we we'll get into that later and at the bottom here you notice you have freehand drawing vector drawing and text so let's say I wanted to add a text and I want to say cool text and then I can go here from the edit text option once you have the text selected and you can edit the text however you want by changing the size the color simply by altering these values here you can also go ahead and tap on the canvas to move the text wherever you want it to go if you want to move it and ensure that you have you know everything aligned go into the move and transform tool this is the one from the one at the very bottom on the right and drag within this so I have to move layer section here so let's go ahead and delete all these extra stuff because we won't be needing them and let's go ahead and create our animation so I can hold on to the layers from the left hand side and just hit delete so let's go ahead and create a subscribe button for our animation so let's go ahead and add our rectangle one of the things we want to do is ensure that the corners is not completely square so let's go ahead and edit shape and we can increase the x and y values we can also change the radius and I think about 50 would be fine for now I think that's good let's change the color to white so you'd go to color and fill and select the white now let's drag this down to the bottom to you know where we would want our animation to pop up and then let's go ahead and add a keyframe here let's go to about a second and well yeah let's go about to a second add a keyframe there as well okay so let's go ahead and add a keyframe here let's go up to about a second let's add another keyframe and maybe 
15 frames add another keyframe there now what we'll be doing is animating backwards so we know that at one second we want it to be right here at zero seconds we want it to be off screen so let's swipe it down and what keyframes really do is mark the position at a point in time or mark the object or element at a point in time this simply tells a light motion that hey at this point in time i want it to be off the screen so let's go ahead and play that and as you see here between 15 frames and one second there's no movement and that's simply because we didn't tell a light motion what should happen at 15 frames so let's go ahead and do that now So now we've created something like this. Let's give that more life by adding some easing curves to it. And you do that by going in between two keyframes and selecting your easing curve section, which is at the bottom left. And let's change the settings from enabling overshoot to disabling overshoot. Now, once we Set our easing curve, you'll notice that there's a slight difference in the, how the animation plays out. I'm thinking that that's okay. And if you want to, you know, actually move one of these keyframes, you can go ahead, you know, select move and transform, hold down on the keyframe that you want to adjust and drag it left or right. Let's bring it over some more. That's that looks good. Before we do anything else, let's actually go ahead mark these positions and we'll then create our animation afterwards. So a basic a basic subscribe animation could you know really just consist of the complete details being brought up into the screen like that so what we could go ahead and do is create everything group them and then after grouping them we make the animation align exactly with this one so let's go ahead and do that now So as you see here, I'm really just recreating exactly what we would have done previously. Getting the shape right, getting the dimensions right. It's 552, 147. So let's select this one. Let's go 552. Other things we can do, let's hide this layer by selecting the eye icon on your left. Is we could add a keyframe for opacity, and to do that, you know, go into blending and opacity, add a keyframe, go to the point where you want it to be completely opaque, add another keyframe, and then set your first keyframe to zero. So, as you notice, it comes in from the bottom but it's fading in as well and you can also add easing curves to this specific um, element and you can also add easing curves to this specific element so you can go ahead and add an easy ease curve there you go Let's unhide this layer and continue creating our graphic. So for the place where you'd add your image, you want that shape to be a circle. So let's go ahead and add a circle. 
and place it right to the point where we would want our circle to be in our animation. Let's scale it up a bit. And let's make that a gray color. To move layers in your timeline, all you need to do is hold down on the layer and drag left or right. So now we have our circle. Now we need our subscribe button, the text for our name and what the channel is about. We could go ahead and just duplicate this layer and then move it down a bit. Let's actually change this top layer to, you know, a different font or font weight. So let's go extra bold. And then for this one, we could go semi bold. Let's align it. And then let's add our text. Let's go into the edit text section and change from my name again to channel info that's good so i'm noticing that i don't have enough space to really put the subscribe button so let's go ahead back to our main rectangle edit shape and what we can then do is just stretch it ever so slightly now, all we then need to do is really shift these over using the move and transform tool to the point where we want them to be. Now let's go ahead and add our subscribe button simply by adding a square, editing the shape, making it more like how our subscribe button is supposed to look. Let's drag it on. And finally, let's change the color to a red because we know that it's supposed to be red. Let's go ahead and duplicate this channel info section. I go in here, hit in duplicate. And then what we'll do is we'll actually take this, we'll drag it onto our rectangle, but you notice that it's actually behind the rectangle. And that's simply because on the layer order, it's behind the rectangle. If you notice our rectangle is at the top and it's right below. So all we really need to do is hold on to this hamburger icon right here on your right hand side and move it above your rectangle. Let's also change the color to white. So that's easier to see and let's edit the text. So now we have our animation. Now to move all of this at once, the best thing to do is really to select everything. So do this by holding the layer on the left, right beside the eye icon and tap in or just drag in above it to select all the layers. Then at the top right section, you just group everything. Now we can move the entire layer as a group. So we go ahead and add keyframes in the move and transform section, just as how we would have done previously to the rectangle below. So let's hide the rectangle below and then let's go ahead, add a keyframe here, go to 15 frames, add a keyframe here and at 20 frames, add another keyframe. At 20 frames, we know exactly where it should be. At 15 frames as you see it should be above so let's go ahead and bring it above and then at zero frames we want it off screen let's go ahead and add our easing curves and there you have our animation complete
Now you could do the same process to animate it off screen or you could simply just go to about 20 frames, one second and 20 frames and add a keyframe for opacity. Go to the end at two seconds and add another keyframe for opacity bringing it to zero. So when you play everything, there you have it. So that's really just a basic walkthrough of how you'd go about creating animations in a light motion. I hope this video and audio was better than you know the previous one. I hope you got something from it. Like the video if you did and comment below what video you'd want to see from me next.